Welcome to numerical methods. So what I like to do now is a very short section on variance reduction. Okay, there are many uh, methods for variance reduction. Actually, we already saw one. The um, important sampling uh, is also a kind of variance reduction. What I would like to discuss is Monte Carlo control barriers. We will make use now of the implementations we have created. Yeah, So we will create a Plague-Scholz model using our time discretization Brownian motion and Euler scheme and so on. And I would like to value an exotic, a little bit more exotic derivative for which I don't have an analytic formula. So Monte Carlo control variates. If you now recall the Monte Carlo convergence rate. So we have an estimate for the error between our true solution, the expectation that we would like to calculate, and our Monte Carlo approximation. So if you look back into the theorem 20, that was our Monte Carlo convergence rate. It was form formulated by sequences of IID random variables. So that one was here, yeah? So the difference between the true value of the expectation and our Monte Carlo approximation can be estimated here by this bound. Unfortunately, only in probability, yeah? but you know that um, we could get rid of this in the cox malafka inequality yeah, of this probabilistic nature. So let's focus a little bit here on the inner part. Yeah, It can be estimated by this bound. And what is the bound? Yeah, there is, of course, the number of Monte Carlo samples here inside. But more importantly, there is also here the sigma. Yeah? The sigma is the square root of the variance of the random variable we are looking at. So that means if you can reduce the variance of the random variable for which you would like to calculate the expectation, you can reduce the Monte Carlo error. So we have this bound here and inside this bound, yeah, the sigma squared is the variance of x. So hence, if we know a random variable that has the same expectation as x, but that has a smaller variance, then we should do the Monte Carlo approximation for this random variable z, right? because it is approximating the same expectation. So we can reduce the approximation error of expectation of x by approximating expectation of z. Yeah, so how do you get um, a random variable that has the same expectation than the given x, but maybe a smaller variance. Now let's ask the first question. How do you get a random variable that has the same expectation than x? Yeah, you get this by taking x, okay? This set has the same expectation than x, and then adding something where this something has expectation zero. Then it z has the same expectation than x. So can I add something to the x such that the variance is reduced? So we are talking about the Monte Carlo approximation. Yeah. So I uh, denote now my Monte Carlo approximation here with this e hat, yeah, superscript n. And I'm now looking for a random variable z that has the same expectation than x, but has smaller variance. Let's make the following answer. So assume I have an additional random variable, y. Yeah? So I have here my random variable x. So in this Monte Carlo formulation, it is the sequence xi. And now I have an additional random variable y, such that I know the expectation of y analytically. 
So in that case, I know that y minus mu y has expectation zero. So I can add or subtract y minus mu y to my x to get a random variable z that has the same expectation than x because what I have added has expectation zero. Yeah, y minus mu y has expectation zero because mu y is the expectation of y. And um, since I do not know how much I have to add or subtract, I add an additional parameter. So let's add an additional parameter and this parameter is here my c. Yeah? And I add or subtract c times y minus mu y. So now I have a very general method of altering the random variable x into a random variable z such that the expectation stays the same. So if I do Monte Carlo approximation for z, yeah, I am approximating actually the same value as if I would do Monte Carlo approximation for x, maybe with a different Monte Carlo error. And that one depends on the variance. So the question is now, what is the variance of z, yeah? maybe for different parameters. Especially, can I find parameters such that the variance becomes smaller? So if you like to calculate the variance of this here, you see that yeah, the variance of z is variance of x minus two times c times covariance of x and y plus c squared variance of y. This depends on C. You see there is something added here, so the variance becomes larger, but maybe you can use this part here, the covariance part, to make the total expression smaller. So if you have a, a random variable Y, so that has a non-zero covariance with X, so that has something to do with X, then we have hope to make here maybe the variance smaller. So what I would like to do is I would like to minimize this. Minimize as a function of C. So minimize as a function of C means that I have to differentiate with respect to C. So if you differentiate this with respect to C, what you get is two times C times variance of Y minus two times covariance of x and y. And this is zero yeah, if c times variance of y is equal to covariance of x and y. So if the c is equal to my c star here, and this c star is the covariance of x and y divided by the variance of y. So you see the covariance of X and Y is important. I need a random variable Y that has something to do with X. Now, if it is completely independent of X, I have no hope to reduce the variance. But, it have, but it ha if it has something to do with X, I can hope to reduce the variance. Actually, this is also a little bit clear because just assume that the Y would be equal to the X then you would choose c equal to 1. Then you have x minus y is 0, and the minus minus is just the mu y. You have the analytic expectation. So this means if you already know the, the expectation analytically, you can completely forget about the Monte Carlo yeah, and just use the analytic expectation. But we can use this trick in the case where we just know a different random variable that is close to the x, that is similar to the x, for which we know the analytic value. So we call this additional part here the control variate, and the set is now called the controlled random variable. Yeah, there is a little subtle thing. Yeah, I can think about a random variable y where I have a lot of knowledge analytically, but I need 
the covariance of x and y. And x is the guy for which I do Monte Carlo. So x is the guy where maybe we don't know a lot uh, analytically. So now I should know the covariance of this and y. Um, sometimes it is if even sufficient to just guess a c. You could just use c equals to 1 if you have an x and a y that you believe they are somewhat close. So you don't get the optimal c, but you already have a re reduction in the variance. And another nice trick is we can use Monte Carlo to estimate the covariance and have an estimate for the optimal c. But this is a nice one. So in general, the optimal C star is not known, but we may estimate it using a Monte Carlo approximation. So we will calculate some C star head yeah, using our Monte Carlo approximation for the expectation to estimate the covariance. Let's illustrate this, and this is a very powerful method with an example. So I have an exotic payoff here under the Black Scholes model. Yeah? So my exotic payoff function is depicted here. Yeah, I'm zero if I'm below K1. And then I have something that looks a little bit quadratic. Yeah? So actually I have S minus K1 squared. So S minus K1 for S equals K1 is zero. So I'm attaching here very nicely. S minus K1 squared. If I'm between K1 and K2. So if I'm at K2, S minus K1 squared. So if I'm here is K2 minus K1 squared. But I would like to attach to the S minus K1 again. So I divide by K2 minus K1. So I... This expression here at S equals K2 is K2 minus K1 squared divided by K2 minus K1 is K2 minus K1. So here I'm equal to K2 minus K1. And then I continue from that point in the linear way. Yeah? So S minus K1 if S is larger than K2. So you see that this is an exotic payoff, but it is just a modification of something which we know very well. It is a modification of the function that pays maximum of S minus K1 and zero. So it is a modification of the European call option. So from this, you immediately guess that if you do Monte Carlo, your control would be the European option. So I subtract the random variable that is the payoff of the European option from here our uh, VT. Yeah? And I will add the analytic value that I have finally have for the European option because under the Black Scholes model, the analytic value is known. So my random variable x, the original one, is the valuation of my exotic option. My random variable y that is used now as a control is the valuation of the corresponding European option. And the expectation of y is given by the Black Scholes formula. We could try with just a guess, we use c equals to 1. Well, what happens if you use c equals to 1? Well, you subtract the green line from the blue line. And this means that your Monte Carlo simulation is just valuing the difference, which is this area here. So you see that Monte Carlo is just valuing this area. So actually just everywhere zero and then a small dip. Yeah? So you see, this has a very low variance, this random variable. Yeah? 
And it is almost zero. Yeah, We just have a small difference that we have to estimate. And you could combine it even now with important sampling and do important sampling around this region here and just sample this difference. So this is the reason why this method will be so uh, good. Yeah, I have an experiment where we implement this. So you find this under Monte Carlo control variate experiment in our lecture repository. And let me just step through the code that you see that we do just using these two guys for our variance reduction. So this is our lecture repository. Yeah. So now I am at Monte Carlo control variate Monte Carlo control variant experiment. So this is the code. So I have a Black-Scholes model. Yeah, there are some parameters here, initial value, risk-free rate, volatility. And now I have my product parameter. So these are the product parameter for my exotic product. Yeah, This is the capital T, the maturity of the stock. This is the strike K1 that I use. And this is the strike K2 that I use. I need a time discretization for my Euler scheme, but since um, this is the Black-Scholes model and my Euler scheme for Black-Scholes model is exact, one time step is enough. Yeah. And I need a few parameters for my Monte Carlo simulation. Initialize the model. We take our Black-Scholes model with our parameters, initial value, risk-free rate, and volatility. Create the Monte Carlo Euler scheme approximation. So the Brownian motion is created using this time discretization and a Mersenne twister random number generator. Our time discrete stochastic process is created using the Euler scheme, using our Black-Scholes model and the given Brownian motion. I wrap it so that I just can call here on this object now, give me the give me the value of the stock at a certain time no? and give me the value of the numeraire at a certain time. So now this guy here will provide the quantities that we need for the valuation. Okay. So the first thing we ask our model is give me the stock at capital T, yeah? give me the stock value at maturity. I ask for the numeraire at capital T, the S at cap, uh, the N at capital T, and I ask for the numeraire at initial time at evaluation time. So now I have here these ingredients that we need, yeah, numeraire and the value of the stock. And for the X, I now need to compose this payoff function here. So first one, the European option payoff is just maximum of S minus K1 and zero. So now I can work with the random variables. Yeah? So the random variables S minus the strike K1. And from the difference, I take now the maximum and zero. Yeah? So this is the function floor at zero. So this is the payoff of the plain option. Yeah? This is, if I now multiply with the numeraire, it would be the why? The payoff of the exotic option is, okay, now I can rewrite this a little bit. You see if S is larger than K2, it is actually S minus K1, but you could also write here maximum of S of T minus K1 and zero, yeah? So you could also say that if S is larger than K2, it is just the plain European option. If it is lower, yeah, it is maximum of S minus K1 and zero squared divided by this. So you just have this decision. If you are above, it is the classical European option, if you are below this point, it is the classical European option 
squared divided by k2 minus k1. So actually the maximum of the two. So I check s minus k2, and then I have a function choose in my random variables. So if this random variable is larger than zero, I take the classical European option. So if I'm larger than k2, I take s minus k1. If I'm smaller, I take s minus k1, maximum of that and zero, squared divided by k2 minus k1. That is the value of the exotic one. So I take the exotic payoff, divide by the numeraire at payment time, multiply with the numeraire at evaluation time. So this is my random variable x here on the left. And then I take the plain payoff, divide by the numeraire at payment time, multiply with the numeraire at evaluation time. This is the random variable y. I also have an analytic formula for the plain payoff. This is my Black Schultz formula. So you see it is a Black Schultz formula with the corresponding arguments for the model and for the product. For the product, it is T and K1. So now I have the Y and the analytic expectation of Y. So I can build my Z. Let's use Z with the C constant equal to one. Yeah? So I use a one here. So we will use exotic one, X minus y minus mu multiplied with one. So this is what I do if, if I do not have an optimal value for the C and I just guess the C is equal to one. Maybe I comment the other stuff out and we let this run. Okay, so what do we have? The analytic value for my European option not the exotic one, the European, which we use in, in the control, this is 29%. If I use Monte Carlo to value the European option, I get the 29%, but with a small error here. Yeah? So we have an error at one, two, three, four, the fourth digit. We use 10 million sample paths, yeah? 10 to the power of seven, yeah? square root, no? it's approximately the fourth digit. So that fits to our Monte Carlo convergence rate, square root of number of sample paths. The Monte Carlo valuation of my exotic product, so I'm using now the Monte Carlo valuation of the exotic product. So this is just take the expectation of X yeah, without doing the control. This gives you a 20, 6%. The value is lower because this area here is missing. Yeah? So this area has approximately 3% in value, which we are subtracting from our European option. So the value is lower. The Monte Carlo error of valuation of our exotic option is also of the same order. It is a 10 to the minus 4. So next step is that I use my controlled variable for which I know that it has the same expectation. Yeah, So expectation of this analytically is expectation of that, the exotic option value, uh, minus expectation of this, but expectation of this should be zero. Yeah? Analytically, it is zero, but now I have here a random variable that is generated with Monte Carlo. So if I look at the controlled one, I get the 26% here, but my Monte Carlo error of the random variable is much smaller. So it's a 10 to the minus five. Okay, so the, the exotic one has here 26.07% with a Monte Carlo error at the fourth digit and this seven is likely a five because we get a 2605 with a Monte Carlo error now at the fifth digit. So by doing using the control, we gain one one digit, yeah, which is quite massive. Yeah. In Monte Carlo, you would need 100 times the sample path 
to achieve the same improvement. So 100 times the sample pass would require 100 times the calculation time. Yeah? So actually we would sit here for a minute or so yeah, to get the result with the same accuracy as we have with controlling. So now let's do the optimal control. Let's calculate the covariance here. And we calculate the covariance using uh, Monte Carlo. And now you see also the power of our object model because here my objects here, the X and Y, they are random variables. And the nice thing is that the random variable, for example, here this random variable plane, they offer a lot of functions. And there is a function that is called covariance. So I immediately have a function to get a Monte Carlo estimate of the covariance. So the optimal C or the Monte Carlo approximation of the optimal C is very easy to get. It is the covariance of Y and X divided by the variance of Y. Okay, there's a typo here in the comment, right? So variance of Y. So, and from this, I would like to have the floating point double value. So you could peek here into the implementation of covariance. Yeah, if you peek here, this is just the interface. Yeah, you see, this is just the interface. And the interface is specifying that the covariance is this random variable minus the expectation multiplied with the other random variable minus its expectation and from that the expectation yeah so it's expectation of x minus mu x multiplied with y minus mu y this is the covariance so we can implement here this covariance and of course this function average is also a function in our random variable uh, which uses kahan summation yeah? so everything is uh, is in place here so we have calculated here the optimal C. Now let's do the controlled one with the optimal C, our Monte Carlo approximation to the optimal C, and let's have it run. And you see, I'm even getting a little bit better. Yeah, It was because our one was already a very good guess. Yeah, one was a very good guess because actually the X and the Y, they are so they are so similar, so identical in these, this region, yeah, that you can immediately guess that one is a very good value, yeah? maybe the accurate value. The other one is just moving a little bit more down here, yeah, subtracting a little bit more yeah? so that um, you have a kind of, uh, yeah, even, even better fit of this, uh, this region here. Okay, so very uh, powerful method. Yeah, just by using this control, yeah, we get a hundred times improvement in calculation time. Uh, if you express it in calculation time, noting that yeah, uh, a factor of ten translates to a factor of one hundred in the Monte Carlo sample pass. So this is here our um, control varied um, experiment. Of course, you can generalize now this concept to multiple controls. So if I just subtract one random variable that has expectation zero, I can maybe subtract multiple things. Yeah. So maybe there are different aspects in your financial product uh, which are similar to different things for which you know analytic formulas. So you can, of course, generalize this and subtract just a sum ck yk minus mu yk uh, such that this sum here still has expectation zero analytically and you can now use the coefficients ck well, many of them to reduce the variance Okay, what is the variance of this random variable z? Yeah, so yeah, straightforward calculation, it's variance of x minus two times the covariances of x and these yk's yeah, multiplied with ck. 
plus the variances of these yk's, yeah, multiplied with ck squared. And then if you would like to minimize this, so if you would like to find the optimal CKs such that you can uh, minimize this, your CK star is now the covariance of X and YK divided by the variance of YK. This holds if the YKs are actually independent. So I skipped this a little bit, but I made here the assumption that the Y case are independent or have covariance zero. So you are removing things from the X, yeah, but the things from the X, they have nothing in common. So they are already orthogonal. Well, you can get rid of this um, assumption if you just orthogonalize your system of wise yeah before you apply this uh, formula to calculate the c uh, k star so if you have general random variables y1 to yn yeah for which this condition here does not hold yeah then you can first orthogonalize them and once you have orthogonalized them you can calculate the optimal coefficients CK just using the formula that we had before, covariance be between X and this control divided by the variance of this control. Small remark, the control variants are very powerful. Yeah? You saw it in our example. Uh, we had a very big improvement yeah, in the con in the valuation. But also in our example, there was a disadvantage. And the disadvantage is that the method is model dependent. So you see this here that we are using the analytic formula for the Black Schultz model. So while here on top, our code is very general. So you could replace here the model with any other model, hmm? Heston model, Bachelier model, and so on. The control would not work because we have to have the consistency that we know the value of this payoff under this given model analytically. So the Black Schultz model. So there's a strong coupling suddenly between the product that we use as a control which is similar to the product which we would like to value. So there's a coupling between our control and the product which we would like to value and the model. Yeah? So there's a strong coupling. I cannot interchange the model very quickly because I have to also interchange the analytic formula for this corresponding product. So this is model dependent. So whenever you change your model, you have to also change uh, the implementation of the control. This is clearly a disadvantage. Also, if you look back to our implementation session where I was moving to the direction that I would like to decouple things uh, such that I can use many different models with many different products, with many different numerical methods, yeah, random number generators and so on. So the disadvantage is that this is model dependent because we need an accurate formula for E of Y of our control under that given model. However, if you have this, you know, then this is um, a powerful method. Also, if you just do some guessing, yeah, you know, because for many financial products, yeah, like Bermudan option, Asian options, yeah, these are complex products where usually an analytic formula is not known, but you immediately know there is a European option that is somewhat close to this product, and it is easy to guess. Yeah. An Asian option does some averaging, okay? So maybe you take a European option, say the first one or the last one, yeah, and you 
immediately know that the payoff has a lot to do with uh, the Asian option, yeah. Because if the first stock value is already low, yeah, then there is a high correlation that the average would also be low. Okay, so very powerful method with a strong disadvantage that it has a high dependency between it, that it's creating that it is creating this strong coupling between the model um, and the financial product. That was it for today.